When adapting a novel as dense and convoluted as Frank Herbert's Dune, you will unfortunately have to cut major elements from it, even if you're splitting the book in two. The first Dune movie cut out a significant amount of the book's mystery storyline, where nearly everyone in House Atreides suspected someone else of being a Harkonnen spy. This cut made a lot of sense. In order to do it justice, director Denis Villeneuve probably would have had to add an extra hour to the runtime. Still, that doesn't lessen the blow for fans who loved the book's early paranoid atmosphere. Although Dune Part 2 covers a slightly smaller page count than the first movie, it too needed to make some major omissions to keep the pacing sharp. This meant cutting the novel's two-year time jump, and unfortunately, it also meant cutting out poor Tim Blake Nelson, a well-known actor from works like The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, O oh Brother Where Art Thou, and the 2019 Watchmen miniseries. Nelson indicated in an interview with MovieWeb that he only shot one scene for the movie, saying, I don't think I'm at liberty to say what the scene was. Villeneuve had to cut it because he thought the movie was too long, and I am heartbroken over that, but there's no hard feelings. I loved it, and I can't wait to do something else with him, and we certainly plan to do that. Sadly, there's not much chance of the scene being restored in a director's cut either, since Villeneuve doesn't do director's cuts. As he explained, I'm a strong believer that when it's not in the movie, it's dead. I kill darlings, and it's painful for me. As for who Nelson would have played in the film, he hasn't said, but fans have a good guess. Count Fenring was a childhood friend of the Emperor Shaddam IV and served as an Imperial agent on Arrakis throughout the Harkonnen's rule of the planet. Fenring's main claim to fame is that he's able to make himself invisible to prescient vision, to the point where not even Paul can see him in his visions of the future, even after he drinks the Water of Life. In the scheming political landscape of Dune, this is a deeply disconcerting skill. When characters like Paul and Jessica are making decisions and counter-decisions based on all of this, the existence of a guy who can't be predicted tends to complicate everything far beyond anyone's comfort zone. Fenring is also a eunuch, which is the result of him being an unwilling part of the Bene Gesserit breeding program. He was a potential candidate for the Kwisat Haderach, the long-prophesied figure whom the Bene Gesserit planned to make emperor, but he was born a generation too early. His wife, Margot Fenring, a Bene Gesserit witch, does appear in Dune Part II, played by Leah Sidhu, but there's no mention of her husband. In the book, Count Fenring serves as the interim governor on Arrakis who helps officially transition the Atreides into power. It's not clear exactly how much he did with this role to sabotage the Atreides' brief reign, but given his allegiance to the Emperor, it's certain that he was complicit, to at least some extent, in Leto's assassination and the massacre of House Atreides. Physically, Fenring is described as a small weasel-like man, another duplicitous schemer in a series filled with them. The character was portrayed by Miroslav Taborski in the 2000 Dune miniseries. Tim Blake Nelson doesn't look exactly like Taborski, but he's a good fit for the novel's description. Despite how intriguing Fenring is, the source material doesn't actually do much with him. At the end of the first book, he leaves the planet to peacefully go into retirement slash exile with the Emperor. He gets a few shoutouts in subsequent novels, but he never makes a real impact on the plot again. It's a realistic yet anticlimactic conclusion to the character, one that doesn't feel all that cinematic. When it comes to properly establishing the Harkonnens and the Emperor as a threat in Dune Part II, it makes sense to keep Austin Butler's Fade Ratha as the big new focus. What helps ease the sting around Fenring's omission is that he was also cut from the first film, so it's not like movie-only viewers had any expectations for him going into Dune Part II. The character cut that stings the most is that of Thafir Hawit, played by Stephen McKinley Henderson, who was established in the first film only to be forgotten entirely in the second. Although Villeneuve, quote, adored the character, he explained in an interview with Screen Crush that he cut the fear from Part Two to make room for a bigger focus on the Bene Gesserit. As sad as this is for Thafir fans, it's also a pretty reasonable decision. After all, much of Book the Fear's character arc is wrapped up in his suspicions that Jessica was the Harkonnen spy, a subplot that was removed entirely from the first movie. The Fear's main arc in the second half of the book is realizing he was wrong about Jessica and apologizing for it, but in the movies, he's got nothing to apologize for. If Villeneuve had to cut characters for the runtime's sake, it admittedly checks out that these two would be at the top of the list.